Hello, everyone that is coming back in. We are welcoming you back for our tour. We are so excited that you are joining us for our tour right now. We are gonna give just a second to make sure that everybody is tuning in and everyone's in good shape. We're gonna take just a second and then we will go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so it is looking like we got a great group of folks that have tuned in for our tour and panel. Um, so I think we are feeling pretty good to go ahead and get started. My name is Carrie Burton. I am one of our admissions counselors at Penn State Brandywine. And I do also have the extreme pleasure of serving as the uh, manager and the club advisor for our tour guides on campus. We finally refer to them as Lion Ambassadors, and we have a handful of them that are going to join us this afternoon and take you around our campus and show it to you. Uh, we know obviously we would rather be taking you physically around campus and showing off all our beautiful buildings and grounds uh, in person, but we are so happy that we can at least do this virtually for you today. Uh, I will say that the pictures and uh, images that you will see, some of them are actually even a little bit better and a little bit more uh, enhanced than what you would have seen if you were taking the tour around campus itself. Uh, so you are going to have the ability to see even more things uh, than you would normally see. And also the pictures are super beautiful. Um, and it is a bit of a sunny day here in Philly, but um, we're so happy that we're able to share with you our beautiful campus in all of its glory. So Hopefully you are able to see me. Hopefully you are able to see the uh, campus tour that we're going to be taking you around on. Just as a reminder, if you have questions throughout this session, don't be afraid to drop it into the Q&A. We're going to make sure we address those um, mostly at the end of the tour and as we then go into our student panel with our tour guides. Uh, so don't be afraid to drop those in there. And uh, if you ha want clarification on anything, that's a perfect place to, to put those types of things. We'll make sure that we address all that for you. So without further ado, what I always like to show off first is our gazebo here on campus. This is kind of the center of our campus. It's the focal point. Um, and what I really like to say about it, um, it as a staff member is that even I love using this space. Um, I think it's super beautiful. It's a really great space to relax, enjoy, take a moment to just kind of uh, take a step back and, and appreciate our beautiful campus um, and our beautiful grounds. So what we're actually gonna do is we are going to literally walk around the campus and take the tour as it would be if you were taking the tour in person. So we are going to wander down first to our main building and I am going to welcome to the screen um, our tour guide, Victor. And Victor is going to tell you a little bit about this building um, and all the great things that it has to offer. So welcome, Victor, and feel free to take it away. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Penn State Brandywine. I'm happy you're all joining us this morning. And yeah, let's enter the main building. So our first stop in the main building will be in probably the most important place for you guys right now, the admissions office. So everyone, including Carrie and maybe some of the people you heard earlier this morning, work in this admissions office. So if you were to come and visit campus, you can meet them in person, hopefully at some point then there. And yeah, the admissions office is honestly your one-stop shop for everything in regards to Penn State. We run our tours out of this building when we have in-person tours. We check applications here. Basically everything in regards to your application, all that content can be found here. And the people that work in this office will be that number one resource for you there. So as we walk out of the admissions office, we'll enter now into the first floor of the main building. And here we have our student lounge. So you'll find a lot of students sitting here enjoying their lunch. We have over to the left is where we were coming from the admissions office. In the middle there, we have our bursar, registrar, and financial aid office. Basically, they are your shop for everything in regards to picking classes, making sure you're registered for each semester, and working on your financial aid packages, whatever they may be. Over to the right down the hallway, we have our career services and advising offices. So as a Penn State student, you have access to the career services office here. They will prepare you for interviews via mock interviews. They'll help you prepare your resumes. And they'll even get you set up on the Nittany Lion Career Network, which is where many Penn State alumni and local companies and companies all across the qu country, quite frankly, uh, will post job listings just for Penn State students to access. So you can apply for internships and full-time opportunities on there. The advising office, 
is a resource, especially for first year students who may be trying to find their way as they enter Penn State. With over 200 available majors across the campuses, there are a lot of opportunities. So that will be helpful for you as you look to pick your classes to be en route to whatever major you end up choosing. And then further to the right there, we have our computer lab, a mini computer lab and a printer access there. So all Penn State students have access to the Penn State uh, sponsored computers on campus. You would use your web login to access them. And the printers are available for the students to use. You get over or around 100 pages of printer pages to use. But quite frankly, we don't really use that many uh, since everything is turned into online. So you have plenty of uh, what you need available there. As we move further up to the third floor of the main building, we have one of our labs up on the third floor. So the main building third floor classes are predominantly science classes. And we have physics labs, biology labs, and like the one you're seeing a chemistry lab. So what's really great about the chemistry labs on our campus is that since we're a smaller Penn State campus, the sections are very small. So this chemistry lab, many students will have sections that are capped at 15 students, but they'll probably be honestly around 10 to 12 students in there working with a professor. So you get great hands-on experience working with a partner and working with a lot of attention from the professor uh, while taking chemistry classes or biology classes or physics classes for that matter up on the third floor of the main building. As we move back to the outside of the main building, I'll talk a little bit more about what's available here. So as I mentioned, the third floor is predominantly science classes. And the second floor of the main building is where you would take basically a lot of other classes, including math, English, psychology. I've basically done it all in the main building at this point, being a senior. Um, so it's great that we have all the classes in close proximity to one another there. If you were to go all the way down the hallways of the second and third floor, you'd find our professor's offices there. What's great about being again at a smaller campus is that with the opportunity to access office hours, predominantly from 12 to one during what Penn State calls common hour or throughout the day, the professors honestly just have their doors open and they're waiting for students to come in and ask them questions, ask about career advice, all sorts of things. I've never at one time at Penn State felt uncomfortable simply just walking into a professor's office and asking questions, whether they be about the course I'm taking with them or honestly just for fun. So the main building is a great spot for everything that I just described. And we'll see you guys at Temesco next. Awesome, thanks so much, Victor. Uh, so we are going to continue on. We're gonna turn around from the main building here and we're going to continue clockwise up around campus. We are actually going to transition up to the Temesco building. And the Temesco building is actually formerly known as the Temesco classroom building, um, which may seem pretty then uh, self-evident and, and obvious as to what goes on in this building, but there is a lot of other great stuff that goes on in here. Uh, so we're actually going to welcome Kiesha and Kiesha is going to tell you a bit more about this building and everything that it has to offer inside. Welcome Kiesha. Hello everyone. Um, as Carrie said, I'm Kiesha and I'm gonna be showing you around Temesco building. Um, so the first place I wanna show you all is the lounge. So right here in this lounge area, um, as you can see, sometimes it's um, set up for um, events. Um, we have a lot of clubs that host events here um, and also like the student affairs office hosts events here. And um, this one, uh, you can actually see me attending this event right over here, um, my freshman year. Um, and it was some kind of multicultural event. I'm not, I don't remember exactly what it was but it's a good time. Um, it's a great event space. And then um, we also use the space as like a lounge area um, when it's not set up for events. So there's usually some tables and chairs um, kind of like strewn about the room um, where students can like relax between classes and just hang out. Um, and it was recently updated, I think, but last year, I believe. Um, so it's a really great space to use for even studying with groups if that is what you would need to do. Um, and so the next place I want to show you all is an example of a classroom in Temesco. Um, so yeah, this is um, a great instruction space. As you can see, the professor can um, share her screen from the projector as well as um, on all of the monitors in the classroom. Um, so it's great for classes that are in like the um, technology based classes or um, even business classes. I know um, a lot of business classes are held here. Um, and another great thing about classroom, um, classrooms on this campus is they can also be used as club meeting spaces. Um, and this very classroom is also used as um, a club meeting space for the Black Student Union, which I was a part of um, for two years. 
um, and it was a great time. And um, another thing I wanted to point out, I think that was it for the classrooms, but great opportunity to um, meet with students for clubs and a great instruction space here in this classroom. Um, so now I want to point your attention to um, that little clock right up here. So behind that glass wall is what is known as the Red Room. Um, and it has a beautiful view of campus from there. Um, I actually had a sort of like a class there. Um, we were really small, about like four students. Um, so that's how we were able to have like an actual classroom instruction space there. Um, but normally it's used for like faculty meetings and things like that. Um, but it's really awesome to sit in there at this big table and like look at the very scenic campus um, from that view. It's awesome. Um, and then I also want to point your attention to the patio area over here. Um, this is also a great space to sit and chill between classes, meet up with friends, um, and it also has a very beautiful view of campus from the standpoint. Um, the trees, I don't know if anyone else is like really obsessed with trees, but the trees on this campus are very beautiful um, all year round, really. Um, so like right in this spot, you have great views of like some of the most beautiful trees on campus. Um, not that anyone cares but me, but just in case you wanted to know. Um, so yeah, this is um, all I have for you about Temesco building and yep, that's it for now. Great, thanks so much, Keisha. Um, and actually, fun fact, uh, our campus itself uh, was built on a, an apple orchard, which I might be stealing a little bit from uh, some of our other tour guides that might mention that a little bit later, but uh, we do really pride ourselves not only on um, obviously our beautiful campus and the way it looks now, but doing our best to maintain uh, the beauty of the campus uh, before we had start building on it. Uh, on it. So uh, yes, I, I appreciate you pointing that out, Keisha. Uh, and it's not just from our perspective as faculty and staff that we, we think it's really beautiful, but our students do as well. So thanks so much, Keisha. We will um, check in with you a little bit later. Thank you so much. We are going to continue on now clockwise, and we are going to go over to one of our newest buildings on campus. We are going to stop right here in front of our student union building. So before I take away anything fun from what Dana is going to tell us, I'm going to welcome Dana to the screen here, and she's going to chat with us a little bit about the student union building and what makes it so special. Welcome, Dana. Hello, everyone. My name is Dana. And I'm going to be speaking more about our student union building, which is also known as the sub. So this building was built in 2017 for the 50th anniversary of Penn State Brandywine. Uh, the student union building is truly one of the most hopping places on campus, as it's really a great space for students to meet, hang out, and relax with friends. This building is also the most center building on campus and home to our Blue Apple Cafe, which also makes it pretty popular. So we're gonna head inside and go to our Blue Apple Cafe. And as Carrie said, um, this relates to the fact that we were built on an apple orchard. Uh, this is our dining facility on campus, which serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner throughout the week and has brunch and dinner hours on the weekends. Um, all the options available are a la carte, which means that students will pay separately and independently for all of their items. Uh, and there are many different food stations, and this is one of them, as you can see right here, and I'm going to be talking about those right now. So the first one is the Shake, Bake, and Brew, and this has our coffee, tea, and Starbucks drinks on campus. And this is also where you can grab some Penn State bakery items as well. Our next one is All Fired Up, and this has our wood-fired pizzas and our pasta to order options. Next up, we have Flippin. Um, this has our grilled items and classic American cuisine, which has cheeseburgers, veggie burgers, French fries, chicken tenders. Um, and this is a very popular station on campus. Our next station is called On a Roll. Um, and this is a Kazakia style ordering system, as you can kind of see right there, uh, where you would design your own sandwiches, paninis, or wraps. Our next one, which you can't really see, but it's still behind the drinks, uh, is our Lean and Green, which has custom made to order salads and it has all the toppings available. And then our last station is the Chef's Table, which has home cooked meals um, where there's a starch, a protein, and a vegetable. And there are two different meals on the weekdays and one on the weekend. And uh, this is on a four week rotation, so there's always new foods coming in to keep it fresh. Uh, and our last little section is the grab and go. So this is for 
pre-made foods that are still fresh, like sandwiches and salads, snacks, things like that. And there's also a frozen section over here where students can bring items back to their room. But this also has our half gallons and pints of Berkey Creamery ice cream, um, which I highly recommend. And I, as a, I'm a commuter student, so I have a cooler in my car that I bring ice cream home in. Uh, but this is also available for the community to purchase, so the community can come in and get ice cream as well. And we have uh, the ice cream available for many of our events on campus as well, as you can see right here. <laughs> so if there's any allergies, there is a registered dietitian that can work with staff to provide for student-specific needs. Um, students that live on campus are required to participate in a campus meal plan, and all residents do receive a 65% off discount on pretty much every food item offered as well. There are three different meal, meal plan tiers, and they're based on how often that you think you're going to be eating at the Blue Apple. There's also a commuter meal plan available that gives a 10% discount on meals. So luckily, the Student Union Building has many areas to enjoy all of these different meals. So first, we have our Fireside Lounge which of course has a fireplace to warm up and it's on during the winter. And this is also a space for a lot of events to happen. We just had a Halloween event in here this last week. So then we're gonna move on to our largest dining area which is called Parsons Hall. And this also holds a lot of events on campus. We've had karaoke nights, magic shows and comedians and many other special events for students to enjoy. And even right now, we are still holding a plethora of safe and social distance events this semester, we just started our Trivia Tuesday. So we're giving away gift cards to our winners and they really like that. So on this floor, we also have our student affairs and our club room. Uh, student affairs is responsible for many of the events that are planned on campus. And they're always bringing educational and entertaining events to us. And they're always great. Uh, they're also responsible for overseeing all the many clubs that we have on campus. Some of these would include major specific clubs, gardening club and multicultural club, but there are many others. But if we do not have a club that you're interested in, you can also create your own. So we're gonna head downstairs now where we have our bookstore, lines, den, housing and food services, multi-purpose rooms and student mailboxes. So first we're gonna look at the bookstore. Now the bookstore is managed by Barnes and Noble. In the first couple of weeks of the semester, they're gonna have all the books that you're gonna need and help you find exactly what you're looking for for all your classes. They also have Brandywine specific merchandise, which we can see right here. Um, and then we also have just university-wide merchandise. And then there's also school supplies available, magnets, things like that. And then we're gonna move on to our lion's den, which is across from the bookstore. And this is really the last hangout space in the student union building. There's a pool table and a ping pong table that students really like to enjoy. We even have a ping pong ball dispenser upstairs. So if you don't have one, you can get one up there. And then you can see our multi-purpose room which are right over here. They're pretty big as you can't really tell from this picture, but they're pretty big. And we have many events out down here as well. And then our student mailboxes and our housing and food services are down this hallway right here. And that is all the great things available at the sub. Hopefully you learn a lot more about this building on campus. Awesome, thanks so much, Dana. Um, so as Dana mentioned, this is definitely one of the uh, newer buildings having been built in 2017, uh, which happened to coincide with our 50th anniversary. Uh, we are going to now continue clockwise uh, over to our Viro Library, which is uh, not necessarily going to look like one of the shiniest and newest buildings on campus uh, from the outside because we've preserved uh, a lot of this building's uh, original structure and integrity and it uh, may look a little bit older but what you're going to see on the inside um, and all the great resources that we have going on on the inside um, are definitely a really fantastic option. So we're actually going to welcome Ryan uh, to our Zoom call here and Ryan is going to tell us all the awesome stuff that goes on in this building. Welcome Ryan. Thank you Carrie. All right everybody my name is Ryan. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Viro today. So our Viro Library is a very interesting building because it doesn't actually stay as just a library. We have classes here as well. On our bottom floor, which you can see goes through those doors there, thank you. When you go in there, you're going to have a couple classrooms for several different things. I've had, let's say, like I've had a math class in there, I had an art class in there, communications, they're general all-purpose classrooms. 
So if you need to take a gen ed or something like that, you can feel free to do it there. We also have an art wing in there. So if you're going to be interested in taking a art course or maybe an art major or something like that, you may spend a lot of your time there. We hang up a lot of student paintings and um, student artwork in there. So if you want to pull up the, uh, the images, carry the first panorama outside, we can take a look at that. Thank you. Okay. So this panorama is just showing off a lot of our outside area once again. We already did look at this, um, but it's a very nice area to go outside and just sit around. You can hang out with your friends here. I worked on an art project here with a couple of my friends um, back when I first started when I was a freshman. There are a couple seats obviously thrown around. We have some events out here sometimes, but let's go into the real meat and potatoes of this. Let's go into the library itself. So our library is very big. It's this entire top floor. It's a pretty expansive area. We have our front help desk there. We have full-time trained librarians here at Penn State for anyone. So if you need any assistance with gathering sources for a research paper or you're looking for a particular book, you could feel free to talk to them and they can help you out. We have our one button studio, which is a little bit off to the left. It's a little difficult to see, but that encompasses a lot of our video processing here on campus. If any of you need to, let's say, work on a project where you need to create a video or you need to do an essay, something like that, something fancy where you need some video source, you could feel free to use that. You have a green screen in there, microphone, everything that you need. We have a computer lab set up in here as well, which is off to the left there. Usually professors will summon you to this lab if you have to do something specifically in the library, you're learning about library resources. There is a quiet zone, which you can see right by that purple sign, thank you. The quiet zone, you go down there, you can study. It's a very nice place because it's completely silent almost every like 24 seven. You can sit there, especially when it comes time for finals or your midterms or anything like that. You need to study for a big test. You can use that. It's a resource that I've spent a lot of time in, and I think that you should definitely do the same. If we want to turn around here towards the left, thank you. We have a couple more media rooms that we're looking at right now with the cursor. These are generally reserved for audio recording. I know that some students on campus have started podcasts and things like that. So if you're interested in doing something with those media rooms, you can reserve them. You got a microphone in there. You can set up, log in, do whatever you want to there. One of our other very interesting parts of Viro are these group study pods that you see here. You uh, can rent these out essentially for a short period, a short period of time. And you, all of your friends, if you're working in a group, let's say you have a group project or something to do, you can bring everybody you need to in there. You can get some markers, some whiteboards. Thank you for pulling the image up. You can share your screens to everybody in there. It allows for a lot more group work than let's say if you were to gather around a table and have to share your laptop to every single other person, everybody can look at one screen. You can use the markers, you can write stuff down. It's very, very helpful, especially for, as I said, group projects. We can go back to that panorama shot. Thank you. So you'll also notice here a little gray box off to the right side. That's another audio recording thing, actually. We have soundproofing foam in there. So let's say if you need to do a narration or something like that, if you don't want to use One Button Studio, you can go in there and you can record your voiceover. It's all nice and soundproofed. I've used it. It's a pretty nice little spot. And if you look at my camera all the way back here, it's a little hard for me to see or for you to see potentially, but that area, and Carrie's going to point to it now for us, that is our tutoring available here on campus. So if you are taking a course and you're struggling with it, you can feel free to go back there. We offer three different branches of tutoring. First, we have our STEM lab, which covers all of your courses for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Your IST courses, if that's a field you're interested in, are also available there. So if you need help with those classes, you could go to drop-in hours or you could schedule an appointment. We also offer a course where you go in and do your homework for an hour straight and you can just get credit for it. 
Same thing applies to English. We have our writing studio. If you need help with, let's say, writing a paper, you're doing a speech, something like that, where you got to write out some big, long, com complicated essay, potentially. Uh, they're willing to help you out and give you some ideas for how you can improve that. And we also have our Brandywine Learning Center. The Learning Center encompasses a lot of our other sort of miscellaneous courses, if you will. So your history, philosophy, courses that don't fall under English or STEM, you could feel free to go over there and they can try and help you out with whatever it is that you're working on. And if we can go back outside, Carrie, to that photo. Here we are again outside. Yeah, this is this is another great part of this outside area as well. In this courtyard, a lot of the time students will go to events and we've held some outdoor events here. Uh, it's getting a little bit cold out, so the amount of that happening isn't going to be that high, but it's a great area to go to on campus. And it's I, I really enjoy the Viro Library. There's a lot of great resources in there. So that's everything I've got. Carrie, if you want to take over from here. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan. So as Ryan said, we have a whole bunch of things that go on in this building. Um, it really is more than just what you might think to be a traditional library with books and resources like that. Um, there's a lot of really great instruction that goes on in here and a lot of really great helpful folks um, whose job it is and joy it is to help out our students. So we are going to continue along. We're going to go behind this building here. And we're going to go to our other newest building on campus, which was also built uh, in 2017, coincided with our 50th anniversary. And we are going to see here the uh, residence hall that we have on campus known as Orchard Hall. So I'm going to welcome to our Zoom call Jemima. And Jemima is going to tell you um, why this building is special to her, um, but of course also everything that there is to know about this building. And we're gonna be happy to show it to you. Welcome Jemima. Hi everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Jemima and uh, this building is special to me because I'm a resident assistant. Uh, I'm not on campus right now, as you can see, uh, but uh, what's it called? Usually I'm on campus like all the time because it's kind of my job, <laughs> but I love it. Uh, so first things first, to enter the building, you have to have access to it. So only authorized personnel are allowed to have access to the building and uh, students who live in the building. So you might be a student, a Penn State student, but if you do not live in the building, then you do not have access to the building and you get access to the building through your um, Penn State ID, which you get when you join the university. So let's walk into the building and, and pretend that we swiped our cards to enter the building. So uh, first thing that you see is this lobby right here. Uh, the lobby is very popular with uh, all the residents. This is where a lot of events are held. Uh, and us, uh, and me as an RA, we are, and RAs in general, are, <laughs> what's it called, uh, tasked, tasked with the um, uh, responsibility of creating events and uh, social settings so that students can socialize and get to know each other and make friends and uh, know who's living in the building with them uh, in, in that sense. And then over here to our right, uh, through those doors over there, uh, there is a game room. Uh, that's also a very popular uh, section in the building. Uh, within the game room, there's a ping pong table. Uh, they have um, like what's it called, board games and things of that nature if you wanna play with your friends or also card games and stuff like that. And also if you wanna just uh, grab like a basketball or a football and throw it outside, that there's also, uh, what's it called, uh, that's available for you to rent out uh, for a certain amount of time. Yeah, and then also we also have a classroom back there. And uh, this classroom is very beneficial, especially right now because of uh, COVID, like if you're in your class, if you're in your room and you have uh, a Zoom class at the same time as your roommates, you can go to the classroom downstairs and so that you're not disturbing each other as you're focusing on classes and all that stuff. And also when it comes to just studying, sometimes you just get tired of sitting in your room all day. So you can go down to the classroom and um, work on your work that way. Uh, also uh, down that hall, there is a kitchen 
which is a communal kitchen. So the whole building uses that kitchen. If you uh, want to have a, something a little home, homey, <laughs> instead of going to the cafe, you can uh, go to the kitchen, whip up something for yourself and clean up after yourself. And that's, uh, I really like enjoy, I really enjoy using the kitchen because I always miss my mom's home cooked meals. So I try and recreate it as best as possible. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to the left, uh, this way, uh, down that hallway, there is, um, what's it called? Laundry room. <laughs> There's a laundry room that you can go in there. Uh, in the laundry room, there are eight washers and eight dryers. So uh, in order to use the laundry, uh, in order to wash and use your laundry, you use your card again, your ID card. And on that card, there's line cash in which you can swipe and um, wash your clothes and dry your clothing. Uh, that, part, that part of the building is usually very uh, popping, very hype <laughs> during the weekend, because that's usually when everyone wants to do their laundry when they have time to do it. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, down that hall also, we also have uh, the TV lounge. So that's a very popular uh, place for students to watch shows and just hang out with, uh, with their friends. There is also like a few computers down there. So if your computer decides to be stupid for two seconds, you can go down and <laughs> uh, what's it called? And use the computer down there. And there's also a printer. So if you need to print something, uh, we, we have that uh, available for you. And then um, similar to the lounge to the TV lounge, there are many study rooms in the building. So uh, on a few floors, the some study rooms are open where students can go there and uh, meet up with their groups and uh, work on projects or also just chill uh, in between classes or just just to chill. Uh, some of them have TVs also so you can sit there, play some video games if you want and uh, all that stuff. Uh, so uh, also, we can talk a little bit about the rooms. Yeah, this is so cool that you are able to see this because usually on a on a tour you wouldn't be able to uh, see a room. So this is so cool. So in each room there are uh, four drawers, there are two beds, there are two desks, uh, there are two um, are they called cupboards? I think that's what they're called. <laughs> two cupboards. Uh, there is a fridge and a microwave. So. Uh, this, this is about how the room looks like. You can always also decorate and everything, make it look cuter and uh, as personalized as, as you want it to look. Uh, something also that is uh, a rule in our building is no pets are allowed. Uh, so unless they're an emotional support uh, animal or service animal, uh, pets are not allowed in the building unless they are non-violent tiny fish that you can put in a small tank. That's the only way you can have a, a, a pet in the building. I know many people who do so. Uh, it's pretty cool and fun that way. Um, I can also talk a little bit about our uh, bathrooms. So our bathrooms are uh, gender neutral. So uh, the bathrooms are set up in a way that's kind of like hotel style. So you walk in and there's like a common area with two sinks. And then in each bathroom, there's about four to two uh, stalls. So you walk in, you close the door, the stalls are uh, floor to ceiling, uh, what's it called, covered. So there's, uh, so you lock yourself in there and you have total privacy. In each stall, there's a shower, there's a sink, and there's a toilet for use. So I really feel safe using the bathrooms because it really does feel like there's, there's nothing that can go through that door for real. It's heavy too. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed listening about uh, Orchard Hall and I'll see you later. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Jemima. So we are going to continue along and we're actually going to pretend like, as Jemima said, um, we have access into the building, which all of our tour guides do obviously during their tours on campus. But we're going to pretend that we're swiping into the building and we're walking through from this back entrance. As you can see, we're going through where we had just come from and we are coming through one of the, uh, what many students consider to be the front entrance. Um, it's a little more uh, focused, centralized to the campus itself. But we are going to continue and we're going to walk up here 
clockwise around campus. And we're gonna stop right here for just one second. I do wanna point out before we get to our final building um, that this is one of our parking lots on campus. And a question that we get very often is um, who is allowed to have a car on campus? Um, how does parking work? And the rule is that you may have your car on campus. You may park on campus, uh, assuming that you register your car, register it through police services, you register your license plate um, and you get one of those little car uh, rear view mirror hangers that you hang up there uh, and it designates that you are allowed to park in certain places on campus. This is one of our uh, mostly general parking lots where our students uh, and some of our faculty and staff do park, um, but parking is free as long as you uh, work at the beginning of the year to obtain that parking pass uh, through our police services registration website, you are able to obtain that parking pass for free, have it the whole year. And this does not just pertain to our commuting students, um, the students who commute to and from their classes each day, this does um, uh, apply to our resident students as well. Uh, so any student on our campus is able to obtain one of these parking passes. So this is not the case at every single Penn State campus, but this is exactly how it works at our Penn State Brandywine location. So we are going to continue around here. And as you can see off to the left, uh, we have some of our athletic courts, some of our multi-purpose courts, um, but we're gonna let our final uh, student talk a little bit more about them and show them off to you a little bit, but just pointing out kind of where they are in relation to our campus itself. We're kind of back to the middle of campus, a little bit off to the side. Um, we are approaching our one of our most beautiful little parts of campus, which we have this fountain here. Um, can't quite see it right now. Uh, it wasn't turned on that day, but it is a really nice, beautiful spot um, where a lot of students sit and just relax. Um, but we have now arrived at the Commons building. So we're actually going to welcome back Victor, who had been chatting with you earlier about the main building. Um, but he's going to talk about all of the things that are housed in this building um, and what makes it so special on our campus. So welcome back, Victor. Hey guys, happy to be with you again. So the Commons building is home to athletics and a handful of other uh, parts of the Brandywine campus. So we're gonna first start by going off to the right into the front entrance of the Commons building, the part that you would face if you were to pull into campus and we're going to enter, enter the commuter lounge. So just outside of the commuter lounge, we have our SEPTA bus loop, many bus routes going all the way from our area to even 69th street feed into the Brandywine campus, which is great. And it gives the students access to basically a large section of Delaware County, which is awesome. And even into Philadelphia. But in the commuter lounge, you'll find that a lot of students hang out here. Maybe they're waiting for an athletic event. Maybe they're waiting for the set the bus. Regardless, it's a great spot for students to hang out, maybe eat a meal with one another or use the vending machines that you see off to the side there. Now going into the doorway to the right that you would have come in through that doorway next to the vending machine there. We're going to go out through that way and into the main gymnasium of the Commons building. So here, this is the home to many of our varsity athletic teams, including men's and women's basketball, women's volleyball, among others, will have their practices and their games in here. We even have different ceremonies in here, like our accepted students presentation is in this building. We even have a welcome address, typically in the beginning of the academic year from our chancellor in this building as well. We also have many classes in here, including some of our kinesiology classes. We've had Tai Chi classes, yoga classes, all sorts of things happen in the gymnasium and students are in here a lot. There's even free time sometimes for students on campus to come in and shoot around if they would like to. In the back there is also, by the way, our auxiliary gym. The auxiliary gym is home to our uh, dance team on campus practices in there, as well as we've had intramural volleyball games among other activities in that auxiliary gym as well. So going out through that doorway there, you would go back into the main hallway into our fitness center. So the fitness center, we have cardio equipment there. So different bikes, rowing machines. This fitness center was actually renovated in 2018, my sophomore year, um, and it's sponsored by NovaCare, which is a pretty great uh, plug that our campus has. And it helps us get awesome equipment for the students to have. And in the back section, which we'll go to in a moment, we also have our strength training area. We have many dumbbells, we have Penn State inspired weights over there, which is pretty nice. It's a great feature for us. And we have four different weightlifting areas there. So if you wanna set it up to do bench press, squats and whatnot, uh, that's a great spot there too. We even have different machines there for all sorts of exercises for all different types of the body and even the balls that you see over there to the side. The fitness center has availability Monday through Sunday during a normal time. And we also have still hours during COVID. We have uh, times where students will 
basically register ahead of time so that they have open time to use the gym in a limited capacity too. So now moving outside of the commons building, uh, we're going to walk through that walkway that we mentioned earlier. We have our multi-purpose courts there. So basically we have basketball courts, a half court set up for another basketball court there. And the side area that you'll see up and to the right can be set up for soccer, volleyball. I've seen students play all sorts of that all sorts of sports outside, which is pretty cool. We even, if you could see there, have outdoor lights. So these lights are basically motion detected and they'll stay on around till 10, even 11 o'clock. I've seen students out here playing basketball. It's great that we have this for the students now living on campus to use basically all throughout the day. On the side there, you also see our public access tennis courts. So sometimes you'll see people from the community playing here, but students can also play here almost all times a day because of the outdoor lights as well. And even me as a varsity tennis player, you'll see me out there basically all the time when and if you come to Penn State Brandywine, which is pretty great. So moving along here, we'll go to some of our, our, our other athletic fields. We have our soccer field out here. Our men's and women's soccer teams are very, very strong. Probably one of, if not the best programs we have at Penn State Brandywine because in 2018, our men's soccer team actually won the national championship for the USCAA, which is one of the big conferences that we play in. And in addition to that, we also have our uh, softball and baseball practice fields, which we're going to to the side here. Softball and baseball, also strong programs. Our softball team has actually won, I think, five straight championships in the PSUIC. A lot of championships. They won a lot of games, basically. Uh, so the softball and baseball teams are great here as well. And we've even had different activities on these fields, too. We have intramural football, which typically played in the fall. Uh, we have that playing on these fields, as well as our student faculty softball game. Me and Carrie have had a few big showdowns in that game every year. So there's plenty of activities and opportunities for the students to take advantage of on the athletic fields all over campus. I have a few other notes for the Commons building. So on the second floor of the building there, which you can see that is our newly renovated Center for Community Engagement. So whether you wanna take advantage of some of the volunteering opportunities around campus, maybe you wanna connect with different alumni that are sponsoring programs, that's the center you would go to for that. We also have a new social sciences laboratory up there too. So our psychology and human development and family studies majors are two of the biggest programs at Penn State Brandywine. And now they have a new space for doing research as well. On that bottom floor, we have our police services. They're available 24 seven since we do have students living on campus. And if students ever have basically any sorts of issues really in regards to that, or even their uh, parking registration, they could go to police services for that. A few other things that the Commons building has for all the students, the nurse and the doctor, they are available for all students on campus. Student athletes are also able to take advantage of the athletic trainer who is available in a room near the first gymnasium that we saw. So that's all I have for the Commons building and I'll send it back over to Carrie. Awesome, thanks so much, Victor. So we are going to turn around and we are going to end our tour at one of the most special places that you could possibly find on any Penn State campus, which is our Nittany Lion Shrine. So every one of Penn State's 20, uh, 20 campuses does have its own Nittany Lion Shrine. Uh, and this is ex especially a popular spot uh, at the beginning of each semester, at the end of each semester, especially during graduation and commencement ceremonies. Uh, lots of folks want to take their picture here, maybe at the beginning of their Penn State journey and at the end. Uh, so we always encourage at the end of our tour that a family and a student should come back here and take a picture maybe in their junior, senior year of high school to kind of document uh, where they were what, right before they became little baby freshmen, um, and then hopefully document it at the end of their Penn State journey. So this is a very special spot, and as you can see, this picture was actually taken um, exactly how pretty much uh, our, our campus is decorated right now, which is with some fall foliage, um, some fun things going on there. We always make sure that we keep the space extra special and extra beautiful uh, because we know it is a very highly photographed spot uh, on our campus. So at this point, this is typically where we end our tours. Um, so what I want to do is I actually want to back out of our tour here and we are going to come back to just me. Um, so hello again, and you're seeing me, but I'm going to welcome back all of our students that we actually just had uh, chat with you. They're going to bring their videos back and I'm going to have them uh, kind of give some context as to who they are, why they've been chatting with you. Um, I want them to be able to uh, share with you um, uh, a little bit about what makes each of them special. So I'm gonna welcome back all of our student tour guides to join me here again. Um, and I would love for them to actually go around um, and 
introduce themselves in terms of who they are, where they're from, um, share with us, you know, what you're studying um, and the year that you are and where you where you hail from, where, where is home for you? Um, because we would love for our students that are on the call uh, to actually hear that you're hearing from folks that are coming from all over the place at this point. Um, they're not just from right down the road. So what I would love to hear from first is uh, actually Victor, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us um, a little bit of that fun information that I just uh, brought up, that'd be wonderful. So hi everyone, again, uh, my name is Victor Ficarra. I'm a senior at Penn State Brandywine. I'm an accounting major pursuing minors in international studies and civic and community engagement. And I come from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, went to Downingtown STEM Academy. Awesome, thank you, Victor. And we're gonna pop over to Dana. Dana, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us where you're from. Hi everyone again, my name is Dana. I'm a sophomore and I'm a biology major with a human development and family studies minor. And I come from Downingtown West High School in Downingtown, PA, just like Victor. So coincidentally, two folks from Downingtown, but we're gonna uh, expand our horizons a little bit here and we're gonna pop over to, uh, to Ryan actually. Ryan, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us that information. All right, hello everybody. My name is Ryan Dawson. I am a HCDD or Human Centered Design Development major here at Penn State. I went to Cardinal O'Hara High School and I am from Collingdale, PA. Awesome, thanks so much, Ryan. And we are going to wander down to Jemima. Jemima, if you wouldn't mind sharing this fun stuff with us. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jemima Mwaba. I am a senior. Uh, my major is business marketing and management. Uh, I come from John Dickinson High School in Delaware and I currently live uh, in Delaware, but live on campus as an RA, so uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jemima. And we're going to wrap it up with Kiesha, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us who you are and where you're from. Hi, everyone. My name is Kiesha Jackson. I'm a psychology major with a human development and family studies minor, um, and I am from um, Fort Mill, South Carolina, and I attended Fort Mill High School. Awesome. So as you hear from our students, we uh, have some folks that are from pretty close to uh, our campus and uh, our local counties around Penn State Brandywine, but we also have some folks that have joined us from far away. And that's actually one piece that I want to start with. I'm going to uh, pop over as a, uh, a question for Jemima. So Jemima, you are someone who you just mentioned that you uh, went to high school and you're from Delaware. Um, but you have decided to live on campus uh, each year. Now, just giving a little bit of context, the high school you went to and where you're from, you're from Wilmington, which for some folks on our call uh, might not know is not too far from Penn State Brandywine's campus, um, but it is, a, I would say, I guess far enough. Um, so in terms of living on campus, was that something that you always knew that you wanted to do? Um, is that something that was a, a reason that you wanted to come to Penn State Brandywine? How has that experience been for you um, over these past four years? Yeah, um, I always planned on living on campus. Uh, I wanted to experience uh, somewhat of uh, a feeling of independence, but my mom also didn't want me to go somewhere too far away. So it made sense for uh, a 45 minute drive to be how far <laughs> I was gonna be. And uh, it's like, it's a hike, but it's not that much of a hike. So I like that. I like that I can go back home during the weekends and hang out with my family and then uh, zip back over. Uh, so that's something that I really enjoyed. And also just meeting the RAs really uh, made me feel like I want to be that. I want to do that. So that's why I decided to also be an RA. So yeah. Perfect. That's awesome, Jemima. Thanks so much. And I know one of the questions that had come through on the Q&A, um, which was a great question, and we actually hadn't mentioned it, so we were so thank you, uh, so thankful to uh, the person who asked it, was how many students live on campus? And it's roughly about 250. Um, and if you remember from one of our earlier sessions, we did mention uh, that we have an enrollment around about 1,300 students. Um, so yes, it is great that we have our residential community, and we do have the ability for students to live on campus. Um, but obviously, Obviously, the grand majority of our students actually do commute um, or get non on campus housing uh, in the area. Um, so that's one question that I actually want to um, direct over to Dana. So Dana, you mentioned uh, when you were chatting about the student union building that the um, 
the commuting option is what you have opted for over the past year. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind speaking to that, is that um, a reason that you came to Penn State Brandywine because you knew that you could commute and how has that experience been for you? Um, and uh, how, have you, how have you been enjoying that um, when we know some students are looking to that going away and living away experience? Yeah, so of course the main reason that I commute is to save money. Uh, I have about a 35 minute commute, which I don't mind at all because it's kind of like this time that I can take to de-stress either going to school preparing myself or coming to prepare myself to do homework once I get home. Um, as a commuter, I do need to keep myself organized as this is an hour of my day that I'm taking to actually go to school rather than be living on campus and being able to just come out of bed. Um, but I'm also a big family person, so I really enjoy being home. They haven't kicked me out yet, and it's probably because I bring so much ice cream back home, <laughs> and they absolutely love that. Um, I'm also, I never really feel like I'm ever missing out from activities on campus. I'm not sure if we talked about this earlier, but we have this thing called Common Hour, which is an hour of every day where we do not have any classes scheduled. So I'm a part of many clubs, uh, and this is when many of our club meetings happen, lots of our events happen. So if you're a commuter or a resident, you can enjoy these events on campus. Perfect. That's so great, Dana. Thanks so much. Um, so at this point, we have come to the end of this session. Um, so I personally want to thank my student tour guides, our line ambassadors, for taking the time out of their Saturday. Um, we know it's a busy time, uh, busy life, lots of things going on in the world. So we're so thankful that you have taken the time to, to be with us. Um, and we're so thankful to you folks that have stayed tuned in um, during this session. We hope that you got a bit of information out of this particular session. Um, so as we've been doing for the entire morning, we are going to close out this session, but you're gonna click that same link to come in for our final session, which is going to um, have special focuses on housing and food services on our campus. And also uh, athletics will be joining us at the final half hour about 1.30. So we will see you in a few minutes after we've set up that session. Um, and if you are not joining us and returning us for that session, we thank you so much for having been with us. Um, and we hope to see you on campus sometime soon. Um, but again, thanks so much for being with us. And we, we hope to see you in the future. Take care, folks. <laughs>